Hey, welcome back to the Begin Within Health Show. I've got a fun one for you today. We are talking about the adult equivalent of a toddler's temper tantrum. Here we go. You're listening to the Begin Within Health Show with Nate Slager. For more, go to beginwithin.fit slash podcast or to enroll right now in our flagship coaching program, go to beginwithin.fit slash coaching. We have all seen it happen and I am not a parent, but I can imagine that for parents, it's one of the most difficult situations they face in raising their toddlers, and that is the temper tantrum. And I am not a child psychologist. I'm not an expert. Like I mentioned, I'm not even a parent. But here is what I would guess happens with a toddler's temper tantrum. There are some external factors that get them into a highly emotional state, and there is no better outlet for them, at least in their experience, then to throw the tantrum, wherever it might be, grocery store, family, picnic, or on the living room floor. I remember throwing a good share of tantrums myself. I remember seeing my brother and sisters throw some tantrums here and there. I'm not going to call anyone out specifically, but there were definitely tantrums in the Slager house as I was growing up. And thinking back now, so childish, right? So childish that that's the outlet that we choose. That's the method that we choose to express our powerful emotions, even if those emotions aren't logical. And generally, they're not. Maybe they're powerful because we haven't slept, right? As toddlers, we haven't slept, so we're tired, so we're Uh, in a heightened emotional state, and we're throwing tantrums. Now, I know what you're wondering. Why are we talking so much about toddler temper tantrums? Here it is. As adults, most of us don't throw temper tantrums when we're in highly emotional states. But we do, at times, choose to deal with powerful emotions in ways that are moving us in a less healthy direction. Perhaps you know where I'm going with this. Maybe based on the title of the episode, you knew where we were headed. I'm talking about emotional eating today. And maybe it's a stretch to compare that to the adult equivalent of a toddler's temper tantrum. But I think for many of us, there's some correlation. We have these powerful emotions. We don't know what to do about them. We know that screaming and acting out isn't going to help us, especially socially, in whatever situation that we might be in. But we still have these emotions and we have to find a way to deal with them. And sometimes one of the ways that we found that we can most easily deal with powerful emotions is through eating. And if if that's happened for you, you are not alone. It's something that I talk with my clients about quite a bit. And I should mention before we dive into this topic, um, if you are someone who really believes and perhaps after doing some research, you feel strongly that you have an eating disorder or you are suspicious that you may, I'm not talking about that today. I'm not qualified to talk about that. I'm just talking about emotional eating in general and doing it in a repetitive way to the point where we're moving in a less than healthy direction with it. So otherwise healthy, we're just trying to find some better ways today to dealing with those powerful emotions. And we're specifically looking at it through the lens of where do I go from the realization that I'm at times using food to treat my emotions, to soothe my feelings. And I'm doing it often enough 
that it's leading me in a direction I don't want to go. It's actually contributing to me being less healthy because it's become so frequent. Okay, so um, if you feel like you perhaps have an eating disorder or have been diagnosed with one, there are therapists that are ready to help you. We've had some of them on the show before. Don't use this episode to diagnose yourself or to try to treat an eating disorder. This or eating disorders are in a whole different environment than what we're talking about here. But some of these strategies may serve you no matter what situation you're in. If you feel like you have been using food to soothe emotions. And again, this little framework came from a coaching session that I was doing with a client not too long ago. And she felt like this was happening for her. She said, Nate, I feel like I'm turning to foods that I know are not healthy. They're not benefiting me when I'm in these very emotional states. How do I begin to address this? What do I do? And on the spot, I helped her create some action steps. And what I'm going to do today is summarize those for you. I've had some more time. I've had some more time to think about perhaps what may have been a better response than the one I even gave her in that coaching session. I want to share it with you. And I feel like this is a definitely a serious enough topic and one that comes up enough that I wanted to create some content around it. I want to do some work with the best ways to deal with emotional eating. So here we go. Let's dive in. And I have for you one, two, three, four steps, four steps that I want to encourage you to consider if this is ringing true for you, if this is making some sense for you, if this is, yep, that's me. I feel like I'm moving in an unhealthy direction because of using food at times to soothe my emotions and using it enough times that it's definitely having a negative impact on my health. So let me share these four with you. And as we wrap up, I'm going to come back to this again. But before we dive in, I think it's important to share this with you. Using food to respond to feelings is normal. I think we have to normalize it. I think we have to realize that food does influence our feelings. So at times, we're all going to do that. And if if I'm just speaking, not, you know, based on any literature here, I'm just talking off the top of my head. This is just Nate Slager. This is his view. I would say that using food to influence emotions or at least connect us with our emotions is part of a healthy lifestyle. Food does influence our feelings. And so as a result, we have to respect that it does. It doesn't always have to be an unhealthy relationship. All right. I want to say that before we dive in. So if, you know, emotional eating, I'm, I'm eating and then I'm feeling something after I eat and my emotions are shifting. I don't think that's bad. That doesn't make you bad. It doesn't make you even unhealthy. I think that's part of a regular healthy life because the simple fact is this food does influence our emotions. What we're talking about is using it in situations where there might be a more constructive outlet or using it to deal with chronic emotional situations where now we're moving in a less than healthy direction, okay? So I think you get that. Let's dive in. Let's talk about these steps. And I think step one we've already addressed to some extent. And step one is this, becoming aware. Becoming aware of the situation. That's always step one. 
is awareness. So what we want to do here simply is ask the question, am I eating at times when I'm not truly feeling hungry? And there's something other than hunger that's motivating my eating. So that can be things like stress, boredom, sadness, stress. <laughs> I mentioned stress twice. That's a very common one. That's a common trigger. And so what I'm saying is this. I'm turning to food when I'm feeling stressed, but I know it's not time to eat yet. I'm turning to certain foods when I'm feeling stressed, but I just ate not too long ago. That kind of a situation. Okay? So step one there, in this process of becoming aware, becoming aware of how we might be using food to soothe emotions, is first asking, am I getting balanced nutrition throughout the day. Because the, the fact is this, we could have a stressful day. Maybe we have stressful days all the time. Stress isn't always bad. Stress is part of life. So perhaps we have some level of stress every single day and we come home, we turn to foods that we know aren't supporting our health. But I think before we move on, we have to ask, when was the last time I ate? What was the thing that I ate? Because a lot of people aren't taking good care of themselves throughout the day. And then at the end of the day, the um, stress, as well as the fact that now we have access to some foods, some high energy, easy access foods, they, uh, they exist together and kind of create a perfect storm. Do you know what I mean? You following me with that? So I haven't taken good care of my nutrition throughout the day, and now I'm home, and I did have a stressful day, and I'm going to fill the void, right? And I'm taking care of the fact that maybe I'm not hungry, but I haven't cared for myself nutritionally, and I'm also feeling emotionally stressed. So what I'm saying is first step is, along with awareness, is how well have I been caring for myself and my nutritional needs throughout the day? Have I been eating some nice square meals with protein, with veggies, with healthy carbs, healthy fats, all those macronutrients present in the meals? Have I had two or three of those already today? If, if we're talking about the end of the day type of scenario. Have I been caring for my nutritional needs because if I have it, even though I'm not necessarily hungry, I'm not really feeling that, you know, that hungry void it's possible, perhaps, that there are some unaddressed nutritional needs if we haven't been having those nice balanced meals throughout the day. So what I'm recommending is take a look at those lifestyle habits and seeing if that doesn't help us to deal with some of the challenges, the, including the emotional challenges of life, is to have those nutritional needs met already throughout the day. In a lot of cases, it will. Everything our body does runs on nutrients, nutrients primarily that we're getting from the foods that we're eating. So if we haven't been caring for those nutritional needs, true nutrient needs, not just calories, but real nutrients, that's what our cells want, that's what our body wants, perhaps some of the things that we're experiencing in terms of emotions are coming from that unaddressed nutritional need. So let's start there. And then the awareness of how we might be using food to soothe emotions can come next. If that doesn't help us move already in a healthier direction. So number one is awareness. Is there a situation here that I want to address? How am I using food? How is it affecting my emotions? Step two. And this is just good old psychology. We are going to work on this. So I'm going to say, yes, I definitely have a situation where I'm using food to soothe intense negative emotions. What do I do? So I have some awareness. Step two is identify. Label 
those emotions that we might be feeling. And what the experts tell us, the psychology experts tell us that once we name it, we have the ability now to have some control over it. Name it to tame it is one of the phrases that comes up often. So we we have to be able to start labeling emotions. Once we label them, they can break their hold. We can uh, break their hold on us. When they have a label, we can do something with them. We can start to sort through them. We can start to understand them better. And as we do, they loosen their grip. They loosen their grip on us. Sometimes just saying, hey, I'm feeling hungry, but I am i shouldn't be hungry. I had these square meals throughout the day. I'm caring well for my nutritional needs. Everything that my uh, dietitian, my nutritionist, my nutrition coach told me I should be eating throughout the day I've been doing, but I, I want to turn to some food because of this feeling that I'm having. What's the feeling? Is it sadness? Is it boredom? Is it stress? Is it anxiety? What's the label that you put on it? Sometimes when we just put the label, just that simple step, it loses some of its power on us. And now we have the ability to start to work with it. So step two is label it. Put a name on that emotion that is motivating us or encouraging us to go and seek out some food in order to deal with the feeling. We want to know what the feeling is before we do anything else. And I'll say, as we take these steps, it takes some time to get in the in the swing of this, in the process here. So initially, if this is happening on a daily basis or multiple times a day, I would say just initially begin to notice, become aware, and put a label on it, and then go and do what you feel inclined to do. If labeling it helps, and now I don't need to go into the pantry or the snack drawer, great. But if you label it and you still want to go, then just go. We're going to work on this, right? So practice it for a week, two weeks of just labeling it. All right, I'm I'm hungry. I want to eat because I'm feeling bored. I want to eat because I'm feeling frustrated. And then do what you feel inclined to do. That's, that's step two here. After awareness, we have the labeling. Now, as you begin to work with the labeling, step three is going to be an all kind of all perfect, all pervasive step. It's going to um, bleed into step four. Okay. It's going to uh, uh, be something that we want ultimately to get really good at this skill. And this is, this is step three, and that is developing the skill of sitting with the emotion. Once we label it, we want to get used to just experiencing it. We want to get used to just saying, "Mm, there it is. It's there. That is reality. That's my experience. That's what I'm going through today is that I'm feeling stress. I'm feeling sadness, disappointment, frustration, boredom. I'm feeling it. And healthfully, we're able to just feel it. We're able to just experience it. Perhaps we can understand the reasons why we might be feeling that way today and just being okay, 100% okay with experiencing that sadness, boredom, frustration, anxiety, stress. Then what do we do? As we practice the skill of sitting, This is still in step three. As we practice the skill of it, I would recommend you just set a timer. Just set a timer. Initially, maybe it's 30 seconds. Maybe it's one minute. Okay. Identify the emotion, set the timer, and then just sit. Work on just being okay with that emotion being inside you before we do anything about it. This is such an important skill. So start with 30 seconds. Then a day or two later, add some more time. Maybe it's a full minute. Then maybe two minutes. Then maybe five minutes. Then maybe 10 minutes. I'll be honest. I don't think you have to go past that. You're going to find that as time goes by and we label those emotions, they start to lessen in their intensity as time goes by. But I would say this. As you use the timer, set it, 
So initially 30 seconds, I would recommend. Just sit with that boredom for 30 seconds. And then once the timer goes off, do what you want to do. Go to the snack drawer, go to the pantry. Or if you've noticed, hey, I don't feel inclined to go now. That's okay too. But just do what you feel inclined to do. Next, we're going to work on delaying that trip to the pantry, the kitchen, the snack drawer a little bit more. For a little bit longer, we're going to sit with that feeling a little bit longer and gradually extend it over time. This skill takes practice. It takes patience, but it's going to serve you so well, not just when it comes to food, not just when it comes to nutrition, but in all areas of life. If we can learn to sit with our emotions, just be okay experiencing them, you're going to find that you'll become a much more resilient person, which is going to serve you in being a much healthier person. So step three, develop the skill of sitting with the feeling, learning to sit with the emotion after we've labeled it. And then step four, maybe you can see where this is heading. After we delay for some time, we're going to take some time in step four to brainstorm. And maybe you can use the time you're sitting, being okay with the feeling, eventually to think about some ways that may be more helpful for you, some more healthful outlets for that emotion, some more healthy, healthier ways to deal with that feeling. Whatever that feeling is that you labeled and now you've been sitting with, what might be a healthier way for me to treat this feeling, for me to re- respond to this feeling? Whatever it is, if it's boredom, oh, that's why I want to go eat. I'm bored. I've been sitting on the couch watching TV. You know, it may be a more constructive, a healthier outlet for that feeling would be to take a walk around the block instead of turning to food and going back to the couch. Maybe, right? That's just one suggestion for one emotion, one label. Maybe I'm feeling sadness and that's why I'm turning to the food. Maybe a healthier way is to put on a song that it gets me pumped up, it gets me feeling good, it brings a smile to my face. We're thinking of ways to more more healthfully experience that emotion, kind of lean into the emotion, right? We've been just sitting with it. Now in this step, we're saying, all right, it's still here. I'm going to do something with it, but I'm going to do something that I know is going to help me move in a healthier direction rather than turning to the kitchen, the pantry, the snack drawer. And then we're going to do it in this step. We're going to do the thing that we decided. We brainstormed some options in this step. After the timer expires, we're going to go and do it. We're going to go and do that alternate activity, that alternate response rather than going into the kitchen. Okay. And after you've done it, you listen to the song, you tried the thing, you took a walk. If you come back and you're still there in the throes of it, then I would say, do what you feel inclined to do. If the feeling is now satisfied, great. If you still feel like, oh, I'm back in the kitchen, here I go again. It's okay. We, this is a process. We need to have patience. We need to continue to experiment. And in this step, step four, this is really some experimentation that's going on. We're going to try something. We're going to see how it works. And we're realizing that we're in this for the long haul. We're not looking for quick fixes. We're actually looking to try to start to change our brain, change the way it works, change the way we work, change who we are in response to these emotions. It takes some time. And that is okay. All right. There's our four steps. Before we wrap up, I want to just re restate this. I believe, personally, using food along with feelings is healthy. There are circumstances where we feel happy, we are celebrating, and there's food present, and food is part of that. Food becomes part of the connection that we have with other people when we're sitting around the table, when we gather together with family and friends for a nice meal. Food and feelings are on the table together. 
And in a healthy lifestyle, that's okay. That is totally okay. But if you feel like emotions and food are moving you in an unhealthy direction, just beginning to move you in an unhealthy direction, take these four steps. First one was awareness. Second one was labeling the emotion. The third one was starting to learn to sit and be okay, feeling that feeling. And then step four was trying out some alternative ways to respond to the feeling. I hope you enjoy this episode. If this type of thing is enjoyable to you, I'd love to know about it. You can find me on social media at Nate Slager. I'd also love to know as you implement these steps, how they're benefiting you. What's happening? What are you noticing? And of course, if you have any other questions, you run into some roadblocks, I'm here to help. Shoot me a message at Nate Slager on social media, and I would be happy to help support you. By the way, if you haven't done so already, if you could please rate and review this show in your podcast player, it helps others to find it. If you could just take 30 seconds, give it a very kind five-star rating, and then just write a really quick written review It would mean so much to me. And then others who can benefit from this really powerful information are going to be able to find it. And along with you and me, they're going to be able to begin within. They're going to be able to make health and fitness fit them rather than trying to continue to fit into someone else's idea of what's healthy, someone else's idea of what fitness looks like. And they're going to be healthier happier versions of themselves as a result. Thanks so much for being here with me once again, listening all the way to the end of the episode. I appreciate your time and your attention. Please continue to take good care of yourself.